Nearly a decade since leaving the White House, Dr. Mariano is looking back with affection and honesty. Born in the Philippines, the daughter of a U.S. Navy steward, Mariano recalls interviewing for the job of White House doctor in 1991 as a U.S. Navy medical officer. Now, you write that when you were first interviewed for the job of a White House doctor, you were worried that your gender, mm -hmm. your ethnic background, uh, even your height mm -hmm. may all serve to work against you. I'm surprised uh, that you felt that way considering the amazing accomplishments you've had in your career. Well, I don't look like the typical White House doctor. They're who are usually ca uh, Caucasian male, you know, West Point graduates. And every time I, you know, I step into a room, they think, oh, you must be one of the White House nurses. Well, you, you, you wrote that um, a, a colleague told you to approach the job with a servant's mentality. It was good advice. That was the best way to approach it. And having been the daughter of a Navy steward, I knew that all along, and if, if you approach it with a servant mentality, you're there to serve the president, you're, you'll do the job well. And is that the case? Would you give that recommendation to people now? Absolutely. If another woman was applying for the same job you had, mm -hmm. you would tell her to, to approach it with a servant's mentality. mentality. You're there to serve the president. They're your take care, there to take care of the first family. It's all about them. It's not all about you. But after getting hired as a presidential physician, Dr. Connie, as she came to be called, thought her White House career might be short-lived for lack of a Band-Aid on a golf outing with the first President Bush. You weren't sure you had had one. What happened? I had uh, packed for that trip, that outing in Fredericksburg, Maryland, and it was the first time I had the medical bag at the medical unit, and they said, well, use this old bag. So I went through and I threw in everything I could for the possible worst-case scenario, which was gunshot wound, a heart attack, nuclear war, you name it. So poison. Packed, poison, Ivy, you name it. And so I brought it with me, and they wanted a simple Band-Aid, Mark. And I it wasn't they wanted it. The president wanted it. And now he was walking towards my golf cart. And as I was looking through the golf, uh, walking through, uh, going through the bag, I couldn't find it. I had a defibrillator material. I had the intubation kit. I had epinephrine. I had bretillium. And then finally, at the very bottom of the bag, crumpled up was one single Band-Aid. And I quickly pulled it out. I ran up to him. He put his foot down on the fender of the golf cart. I slapped it on. He says, you're a great American. And I sat down. I was thankful I still had a job. From that day forward, did you ever fail to have a, 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 a selection of Band-Aids in your bag? I have hundreds of Band-Aids in my bag. Everyone who works at the White House is a witness to history. But the medical staff has a unique perch. During the Monica Lewinsky investigation, President Clinton had to submit a DNA sample to independent counsel Ken Starr. It was Dr. Connie who drew the blood from the president's arm in the presence of an FBI agent. She says that as a White House doctor, her political views of the president's took a back seat to her job. It doesn't matter. In the end, you like them for who they are as people. You may disagree on their policies and, and the things that they talk about, but in the end, it's how well you get along, how well you like them as people. In her 3,300 days at the White House, Mariano rose from entry-level doctor to head of the medical unit to physician to the president. She rose in rank as well, from Navy commander to captain, and in her final year on the job to rear admiral the first Filipino woman to reach that rank. It was a major factor. When my father joined the Navy in the 1940s, the only position they would give to Filipinos at that time was to be a valet or a medical, uh, a, a, med, a mess specialist working in the homes of the Admiral. So when I became a Navy Admiral, that was a significant uh, achievement for Filipino Americans to see one of their own make the rank of flag officer. And, and as you recall, you interviewed me right afterwards. I was promoted in the state dining room. And that was a particularly uh, special because that's where my father, his uncles, a lot of Filipinos have served in dining rooms. And it was very symbolic. In her just published book, Mariano calls her years as a White House doctor a once in a lifetime experience. When you're here in Lafayette Park, back in Washington, across the street from the White House, what uh, memories does it uh, bring back? You always get a shiver in your spine when you walk through those gates, because very few people in this country can just walk through those gates with their special pass. And when you walk down the colonnade into the main White House, you have to pinch yourself, because very few people get to walk that. It's so historic. You think of all the presidents who's walked that colonnade. And then again, when you walk out across the South Lawn to Marine One, 
you're so grateful and blessed to be in the position to, to be able to board that aircraft. 